Hi everybody, it's crazy, it's Monday, and it's time for the Upbeat GE video of the week. Now before I get started, gotta give a shout out to my trusted because you guys rock. To my crazy fam, I love you guys. We're up to episode number 73, and we left off last week with materials and textures. Okay, um, if, you're, if you've been following along, we're up to page number 5 in chapter 5. So, let's get started. Okay, materials and textures. Once the modeling is done... Materials and textures, which add visual fidelity, or fidelity, fidelity, fed, fidelity, whatever, can be applied to the mesh. Using a combination of materials and textures, you can define surface characteristics such as color, shininess, bumpiness, and transparency. Textures also allow you to bake certain effects such as complex light maps and shadows onto the objects because these effects would otherwise take too long to compute in real time. Due to the importance of materials and textures, a large portion of this chapter will focus on materials and textures. For more in-depth discussion on texture baking, refer to chapter 8. Scroll up a little bit. Okay. The Blender game engine implements a subset with some overlapping of all the features found in the regular Blender. Not all options available in the Blender internal renderer are available in the game engine. Many advanced graphics features are simply too slow to be implemented in real time. But as you will soon find out, even some of the complex effects like reflection, soft shadows, and ambient occlusion can all be approximated in the game engine using clever tricks and modern graphics cards. Or on modern graphics cards, excuse me. Okay, so before I get going into lights and stuff, I'm going to go a little bit back. I'm not really good at, you know, texturing. Okay, I never have been. Materials and textures have always been kind of a hard pro uh, prodigy for me to do. So that's why I'm really going to focus in on this one a bit because I really want to learn it myself. So I hope that this will help you learn it as well. Okay, so on to lights. Lighting not only sets the overall tone of the scene, but it also helps highlight certain details while hiding others. Older hardware or mobile devices cannot afford to use dynamic lighting for performance reasons. So, they often employ pre-computed uh, pre static lighting, which is faster to render but does not have the flexibility that dynamic lighting offers, such as uh, swinging bathroom lights that, uh, that cast moving shadows. In fact, without lighting, the virtual world you create would be pitch black. <laughs> the game engine supports eight real-time lights in multi-texture mode and at least eight in GLSL mode. More on the different shading modes later. Uh, but lights are expensive and more lights will sh uh, slow the game down significantly. Advanced features such as real-time shadow will slow down the game even more. Light is a very complex phenomenon. Effects such as ambient occlusion, bounced light, and volumetric light shafts are all very computationally intensive and simply not feasible for most real-time projects. It is up to the artist to devise ways to fake these effects when needed okay um if you've got you know one of the newer graphics cards you know you have you know uh, rts and all that so um but what we're focusing on is computers that really can't handle like my old potato that like kind of sits over here hiding that i rarely ever use anymore because i've got my big rig okay um but with lighting lighting is a big factor okay Advanced shading techniques. Thanks to the rapid advances in shading language and graphics processing unit, GPU, effects such as ambient occlusion, bounce light, and many others that were considered impossible are now possible using some very complex shaders. 
Explaining these advanced techniques is outside the scope of this book, but a section of sample files is included on the accompanying disc. For advanced shader examples, you can look at the book GPU Gems from NVIDIA. Okay, so um, what it's talking about on the disk is actually the file that you got that has all of these projects that encompass the entire book. If you haven't gotten that, down in the description, there is the uh, Game Engine book sites you can go to. You can get the book if you don't have it already, which I hope you do if you've been this far into it. Um, but if you haven't done the files, you're just popping over here to this, this one because this one catches your interest like it does me, then you, you want to get the files to look at and figure out a little bit more grab the files open them up look at them play with them figure them out okay all right shading modes the game engine offers two different real-time shading modes think of them as different rendering pipelines one is more limiting and uh, the other is more advanced in this chapter you will first be introduced to the most feature-rich shading mod, uh, mode which is GLSO which is what most of uh, most uh, game developers now use all the time you know multi textural just kind of faded itself out then we will talk a bit about the older multi texture mode okay and if you're still set up with in your shading with uh, multi texture mode I suggest you switch it over to GLSL because it's a lot better it has a lot you know more things that it can help you with that's uh, because I don't I know you don't have it in yeah I don't have it in here anymore uh, I'm looking over in uh, a BGE 0 0.2.0 0, which is the one I'm using right now because of the fact that uh, my buddy day has been really hammering out some really cool stuff on uh, uh, for a buddy of ours and he is really getting game 3 going so if you haven't heard about game 3 in the description drop on over to the server and say hi today ask him about game three really cool little engine and it's a lot better than that you know what a lot of engines are because of the fact that it's very simple okay so let's continue on game engine interface okay if you are following this chapter on your own without using the supplied template file from the book remember to set the render engine to game blender or to game blender once you started blender this will reveal all the relevant game engine features in the user interface and hide non-relevant interface elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to here. Okay, this is 0 0.2.0. As you see, when you first start it up in the standard default file, okay, it's going to pop up as Blender Render. You want to switch over to Blender Game. They say Game Blender, but it's actually Blender Game for old, uh, newer versions of it. Uh, I believe... When this first came out, it was, you know, the other way around, or they just put it in wrong. <laughs> because if uh, if you look at the book, it also shows that it says Blender Game and not Game Blender. Okay, so you want to make sure you switch it over here from Blender Render to Blender Game. And as you see, if you, look, you caught that little glimpse over here, these all changed. So when that happens, there are some things that are being taken out and other things that are being added in, like the embedded player. You've got your, you can do the embedded player or you can do the standalone player. And hitting P won't just do nothing anymore. And now it will actually play your game. If you turn on hit P, oh look, now you've got your game. Okay, it automatically starts it up for you. Okay, so whenever you see somebody say hit P, okay, that means you're going to hit play or which is basically play your game. All right, so we'll continue on here. Okay, here's a table that shows the advantages and disadvantages of two shading mode, uh, the two shading modes. The GLSL mode, despite being the most advanced shading mode in Blender, also happens to be the easiest to use because we can accomplish the effect using the regular material and texture panel. Unless backwards compatibility with older hardware is a big concern, I strongly recommend using GLSL shading mode for all your projects, even if you are not planning on using all the advanced features, it's good to know that they are there if you need them later on. Okay, now I'm gonna switch back over to here. Hang on, let me get back over here. And then, there we go. Okay, 
these are this is the comparison between multi-textural and GLSL. Okay, the date of introduction was 2006. Okay, multi-textual uses OpenGL 1.3. Okay, now GLSL was came out two years later and was uh, OpenGL 2.0 plus. Okay, now multi-texture is 1.3. Plus, so don't don't wig out about it. Oh, I if it's you know 1.4, I can't use it. Yes, you can. Okay, if you're really you know into doing using multi texture, that's cool. It's just that better features were added, and such as lighting accuracy per vertex. This is per pixel. Okay, so each vertex has a certain amount of lighting that you can do. This one does each pixel lighting. Okay, number of lights you can have eight in multi-textural but in GLSL you can have eight or more okay real-time shadow eh, you ain't gonna get that in GLSL yes you will okay max texture layer you only get four okay in GLSL 16 so as we continue to go on through this you'll see that there's the same you know some of these like texture blending you can do custom shader you can't do material nodes you can't do which in uh, a lot of the newer games are using material nodes a uh, buddy of my my buddy day and uh you know a few other friends of mine use material nodes a lot especially when it comes to you know building games so that's something you definitely want to be able to use and you want to have a yes to it and not a no okay Viewport preview, you get a partial preview. Uh, GSL, GL, GLSL, you get a full view. Okay, should you use it? Nah. You know, and GLSL, yes. <laughs> okay, it's the difference between going from that old beat up bicycle to one of them electric bikes. It's the same concept. You know, you could you can pedal it if you want. You know, but you also have the easy button of turning it on and getting it, letting it take off for you. Okay, it's not that you shouldn't use multi-textural, especially if you're doing like in a lot of old games, like in uh, you know standard Python. Um, but if you're doing anything that's nowadays and you want to have something that's really robust, you really want to go with GLSL. Okay, let's see where we at. We're at 12 minutes, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end it at GLSL mode down here. So I'm gonna finish this up real quick. Because the way to apply materials and textures varies somewhat depending on the shading mode, it is a good idea to decide on a shading mode before you start the project to avoid unnecessary conversion later. An example of what each mode offers is shown here using this car model and it doesn't have the car model. I don't know why. Let's see. Yeah, because they no longer have it. They used to have it, but it's just not there anymore. Um, I brought the page up and it was like, eh. so sorry about that. That ain't going to work. So what we'll do is we're going to end off with GLSL mode. It's at the, yeah, it's at the top of page eight. Okay, which we're going to be going down here, but you'll see the GSL, GLSL mode here. So we're going to end it there. That's page eight. Let me switch back over to here. Page 8, GL, GLSL mode for next week. Um, actually, and I do have a little bit of an announcement. Next week, I will not be doing a video um, because it's my, uh, my anniversary. And so, yeah, I'm not doing it on my anniversary. <laughs> no offense, we'll have to skip a week. I'll make it up to y'all the week after. So, give me, give me two weeks and we'll see you then.